what you're doing tonight. I'm Steve Cropper, <laughs> guitar player of Booker Teen EMGs and the Blues Brothers Band. Very nice. Uh, Steve, how long have you worked with Booker T and what is it like to play with well, him and his band? <laughs> With Booker, I've worked a long time with Booker T and EMGs. We had our first record, our first hit in 1962. Kind of dates me a little bit, I guess. <laughs> that was a good year. You know, Booker was young, I was young, and yeah, it was a great year. It sure was. A lot, a lot of good things happened, but we had a, a summer hit that uh, the kids like to dance to, especially the college kids, and that was, you know, back in the early 60s, I and say, what yeah, song everybody was that? wanted to dance, Green Onions. Uh, <laughs> tell me what you're doing now. What's, what's exciting well, for you now? <laughs> other than tonight, yes. uh, I do a, a lot of events, um, charity things. I'm in the studio presently. Uh, we're on leave right now, but we're going to go back in the studio with Dwayne Betts, Dickie Betts' son, having a blast doing that. Um, I don't know uh, if I'll be going out this summer or who I might be going out with. Uh, Lou Marini, our saxophone player of the Blues Brothers, is out with James Taylor again, which is a cool one. And I got to go out with Peter Frampton last year. Uh, he'll probably tour again maybe next year, 2015. I may go out. I told him I would do it if he wanted to do it. Uh, I'm doing uh, in the fall another tour with the English Animals, which the drummer is the original guy who started the group. Yeah. You're a busy man. Well, I do a lot, yeah. yeah. So I'm always working. So what is one thing you can talk about uh, creating a song? Today we're talking about birth of a song. Well. <laughs> You know, I don't know if it's a natural habit. I started writing stuff down and titles and things like that when I was about 14 years old. So the opportunity later to go to, to Stax and have a high school band, we were very fortunate that our saxophone player's mother was co-owner in the, in the studio. Oh, yeah. So we were allowed to, let's say, rehearse or play on Sundays. And, uh, <laughs> The brother partner, Jim Stewart, I don't think ever give us a chance. He, I mean, he gave us plenty of chances. I don't think he thought we'd ever make it. And along with some studio musicians, we came up with a song last night, which was a big, big record. I don't know. I don't remember what it went to on the charts. One of them, I think it went to about three or something. But uh, we toured that whole summer in 1960 with the Marquis, and they, a lot of those guys stayed out there. I just, I don't know what it was. I was drawn to the studio. I, I so called a pack. Saying, uh, oh my God, yeah. Uh, spit on daddy. Yeah. Spit on daddy's hairy asshole. Mm, mm, suck daddy's little cock. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, now fuck daddy. Fuck daddy's big fat hairy ass. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I bet you want to come all over daddy's chest. Mm. Yeah, you want to suck on daddy's big fat hairy titties? Oh yeah, suck it. Mm -hmm. Now let me suck your cock. Mm. 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 Daddy loves dick. Yeah, daddy loves dick. Uh, now suck daddy's toes. Oh yeah, I bet you like it when you suck on daddy's toes, don't you? Oh uh, yeah, daddy's your submissive little bitch, isn't he? Oh my god. Oh my god, baby. Daddy's gonna come. Daddy's gonna come. Daddy's gonna come. Uh. Uh, 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 oh, I'm daddy, I'm daddy.